So you're thinking about buying or you've already bought a side-by-side -side, and now you need a way to haul it. Maybe you already have a toy hauler and you're thinking it sure would be nice to have a small trailer to haul the side-by-side -side for short day trips. People do not always understand there's a lot to consider when purchasing a trailer. And while it is not as big as an investment as a toy hauler or RV, it is still an investment and you want to purchase the correct one for your needs. I'm here to tell you, do not trust the trailer salesman to get you down the road legally. I would like to give you a few pointers based on some failures of mine in the past of some things that you should consider when purchasing a new trailer. First and most important question is what size trailer should I get? As an example, my Wildcat Double X is a two-seater and measures 136 inches or 11.3 feet long and is 64 inches or 5.3 feet wide. Knowing this information, my trailer must be at least five and a half feet wide by 12 feet. But wait, will that size trailer carry me into the future? I must decide, will I keep it stock or install upgrades such as Robbie Gordon's long travel kit? My answer is, I would like to install the Robbie Gordon long travel kit at some point in the future. This will change the width of the machine to 72 to 77 inches depending on the long travel kit. So I better get a trailer that is wider than 77 inches to adapt to my future growth. Also, will I be hauling fuel and gear along with the side-by-side -side on the trailer? Maybe you would use it to haul various lengths of lumber when not using it to haul the side-by-side. -side. The trailer can have many uses other than just hauling your side-by-side. -side. Based on that information, I decided on a 14-foot long trailer 83 inches wide. I chose one with a drop gate and built-in ramp. This way I don't have to mess around setting up loading ramps. Just makes life easier. Plus, you have the gate giving you better security of the items on your trailer. Now that we have the size figured out, what is the max payload or weight you will be hauling? As an example, my Wildcat XX weighs 1,860 pounds dry. Add your fluids and you're close to 1,900 pounds. Now the gear I'm hauling on the trailer includes another 20 gallons of gas plus gear. So I'll just say I would like a max payload of no less than 2,500 pounds to be safe. What a lot of people do not understand is the meaning of GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating. You must verify the trailer is rated to support and haul the maximum amount of weight you will be using it for. In my case, it was hard to find a single axle trailer to support this kind of weight. I didn't want to have to mess around with four tires. The trailer I purchased has a gross vehicle weight rating of 4,440 pounds. And since the trailer itself weighs 1,500 pounds, the max payload I can carry is 2,940 pounds. And that's because this trailer trailer has a 5,000 pound axle installed. The typical trailers of this size have a 3,500 pound axle and therefore would reduce my payload by 1,500 pounds making my max payload available to carry 1,440 pounds. I would be overweight with just the Wildcat XX loaded by itself. So ensure the trailer you purchase is rated for the weight you're going to be hauling. This will ensure your safety as well as the drivers around you. Plus you will not have to worry about a ticket for being overweight should anyone check. Make sure you do not use the tongue hitch placard thinking it's your trailer rating. Several trailers use the same tongue and the tongue rating is the max for the tongue itself, not the trailer. Next, let's talk about tires. Make sure the trailer you are buying has tires rated for the weight and speed you're hauling. As you can see, my trailer has ST225 slash 75R15 rated at 2540 pounds per tire and therefore I can safely haul 5080 pounds although my trailer is only rated at a GVWR of 4440 pounds. So I really have more tire than I need which is a good thing. If they offer to give you upgraded tires for let's say an additional 70 bucks, do it. That's what I did and it's well worth it. Make sure to get the spare tire option. You don't want to leave home without a spare. Trailers of this size do not typically come with brakes. So make sure your vehicle has a tow rating to pull and stop your towable GVWR. If you plan on purchasing a trailer larger than this with dual axles, it will more than likely come with brakes. Well, that's all I can think of for the must-knows prior to buying a trailer for your side-by-side. -side. Any options above what we just discussed is a nice-to-have. So, happy trailer hunting!